Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be a review for a uh, kind of a discriminant problem. And I know that some of you might have some trouble with this, so I decided to make this video. Um, it's here in this problem, question number six. It says, find discriminant number and type of solutions and the possible equation for this example here from the graph. And I know some of you guys look at the graph going, well, I, I, and if I have the equation, I can find discriminant pretty easily. Not a big deal, but when you have to find the equation from the graph, that might be a little bit tough, though. But let's go over the questions that we're pretty sure know how to do, though. Let's begin with the number of solutions, number of solutions. And, and number of solutions comes from the fact that we can identify well, the roots in this case. Wherever the graph uh, intersects the x-axis will be a root or solution for the, for the, uh, for the equation of the, of the of the function. So we see here that it intersects the x-axis at negative 5, so negative 4, negative 4, so x equals negative 4, and here at x equals 2. So there are two solutions, two solutions. All right, so we can just find how many solutions are based upon where it intersects the x-axis. So that's pretty okay, right? Now the type of solutions. You'll see in this case that these are, because it intersects the x-axis, they are going to be definitely real solutions. They are real. Okay, that's the first, that's the, the first thing because anytime the, 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 the function intersects the x-axis, the x-axis represents all the real numbers all the real solutions in this case that could occur. So in this case that we have intersects to x-axis twice, there are two real solutions. So not only are they real, the numbers are negative four and two. They are integers. And integers are definitely gonna be rational numbers, rational numbers. They fall under the group of rational numbers. And finally, since they're not the same number, they are unequal, meaning, uh, that we have two roots that are not the same number, they are unequal. Okay, so unequal. Sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. It's, I'm trying to write my screen with that pen. It's my little finger here, so oh, my big clumsy finger. So un unequal, okay. So now uh, we got two of the four things we want to get. So now we got to find the, if we can find the possible solution, we can find the possible equation. And in this situation, you know, we need to kind of now work back to something we've done before. Um, and so what I recommend in this case is to find another point for us to determine what the equation is going to be. And so I'm going to pick in this case, this here, the important point is the vertex. Okay. Vertex. And our vertex here, it looks like the coordinate negative one comma uh, positive nine. Now, as far, as far as the roots go, the coordinates we have here are negative four comma zero and two comma zero. So we have really three points, but we can use the vertex form of a parabola to help us determine the equation. We have, we have uh, one vertex and we have, um, we have one, one point, especially in this case, one of the roots. Okay, so let's go to because you know it's not much space here and everything like that. Uh, let's go to in this case uh, the whiteboard here to be able to uh, create the equation and therefore find our discriminant. Okay, now we hope in this case that our discriminant based upon equation is going to be a. It looks like in this case because we have two. We, we have real, real rational equal roots it has to be positive number and a perfect square. So that's kind of the whole thing. You, if you have your, if you have uh, the roots are, are are real rational equal, the discriminant should be a positive number as well as a perfect square. Okay. So let's go to a whiteboard. Okay. So we had our vertex. So our vertex. Is at negative one comma nine, and our roots coordinates are going to be negative four comma zero. Oops, negative four comma zero, 
and two comma zero. So this actually helps for those individuals who, who want to find the equation of a parabola given the uh, given the vertex and one point. So we use our vertex form. So a vertex form parabola is going to be y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is the vertex. And so since the vertex is, is now negative 1 comma 9, our h is negative 1 and our k is 9. Okay, so we'll put that down. Right, h is 1, negative 1 actually, and k equals 9. Right, and so now, you know, our other point we're looking for is x comma y, and we can choose, you can choose any one we want, either, either negative 4 comma 0 or 2 comma 0. I'll go 2 comma 0, so that's x comma y, so our x value will be 2, and our y value will be 0, okay? Now we're going to plug into our equation here. So our y value is 0, our a value we're trying to solve for, our x value is 2, our h value is negative 1, so 2 minus negative 1 squared, and then plus 9. So at this point, what we do is we're going to do 0 is equal to a. Now, negative 2 minus negative 1 is 3. So 3 squared, and then here's plus 9. We're going to subtract 9 on both sides because we'll get a by itself. Sorry, my 9 kind of looks like a, or a looks like a 9. So I'm going to keep track. Hopefully, you can keep track with me. Is negative 9 equals, now 3 squared is 9, so I have 9a. We divide both sides by 9, and we get an a value of negative 1. So a is negative 1. So now that we have a equals negative 1, we're going to go to plug back into, again, this equation, just the a value equals negative 1, and our h and k value vertex is a negative 1 comma 9. So our equation now will be y equals negative 1 times x minus negative 1 or plus 1 squared plus 9. And that will be the equation we have for our parabola. Now comes the more trick, not going to trick your part, but more algebraic part that is we, we practice hopefully for uh, is it's kind of expanding our our equation here. So. So now uh, we're going to expand our equation and you know multiply everything out. You get a, b, and c value to find our to find our our uh, discriminant. So let's take our equation. I'm going to go to take our equation to another board and then you know have more space to still crowding up the whole page and everything. So hopefully we're okay with finding the equation now. Okay. Okay. So we have our equation of our, of, of our parabola. And so now let's expand. So this is y is e y is equal to negative one times x plus one times x plus one plus nine. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna multiply these out now. So this should be negative one. Here we do x times x x squared. X times one is x. One times x is x. One times one is one. And then we do plus 9. Now, again, operations. Now, you could have multiplied negative 1 with the x plus 1, but I find in this case, since multiplication is what's called commutative, the order we multiply these three things, negative 1, x plus 1, x plus 1, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? So I like, to, I like to multiply my x plus 1 times x plus 1. <clears throat> and so we're going to get here negative 1 times x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 9. Okay, and so we end, so now we, we, we distribute the negative 1, and we're going to get in this case negative x squared minus 2x minus 1 and then plus 9. Our equation now is going to be in standard form y equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 8. So now this is going to help us out. So this is now going to be the standard form of our parabola, a originally the vertex form.
we can definitely expand this out. And so from here, we can identify our A value is negative one, add up to four. Now our B value is negative two, and our C value is eight, to find our discriminant, okay? And our discriminant formula is gonna be B squared minus four AC. We're gonna plug that into our formula. And so now we have, you know, make sure you put parentheses around everything, right? Negative two squared minus four times negative one times eight. For those of you who allow you to calculator, remember, <clears throat> always put parentheses around all the what numbers plugging in. In the calculator, it will give you the correct answer straight out. Uh, but for those of you without calculator, again, you know, be very careful in this case because negative two squared is not negative four, but positive four. And then negative four times one is negative one is positive four times eight is 32, so at plus 32. So our discriminant value is 36. And this makes total sense because in this situation, we have, we have in this case, a, a perfect square, our perfect square, which means our roots are going to be real, rational, and unequal. Okay, so this is our discriminant. Okay, and so we can go back to our sheet there and then fill in with the following information just to be make sure we are like, okay, okay, just to complete this null, but it took a while to find the discriminant null. It just kind of takes, takes a while to do this problem in this case, all right? So going back to the sheet here, our discriminant we said was 36. And our possible equation was going to be, I'll write it's underneath because it's a little more space and all. Y is equal to, we can use a vertex form, which is totally good, negative one times X plus one squared plus nine. Or we can write the, the standard form we got after expanding everything, negative X squared uh, minus two X plus eight. Either form is fine unless they specify, but you will probably have to write everything in standard form just to be able to find A, B, and C. I do not think it's uh, relatively easy to figure out what the what the uh, roots would be, what the what the, um, what the uh, possible discriminant would be. Otherwise, you know, um, I think in this case, you know, for number eight, the possible discriminant may be a little easier because of the fact that since there's only one solution for number eight, only one solution for number eight here one solution, the discriminant has to be zero, has to be zero, all right? And our roots would be real, rational, and equal. But to find the equation now, we go through the whole process here. Again, our, we, I would be able to use the vertex and this point here. This point here, so our vertex, our vertex would be in this case, it looks like one, two, looks like a neg seven comma zero. Right, and past the point, it looks like in this case, this point here is going to be neg five comma four. So finding this equation for this one would probably be a little easier because vertex form, you know, you're going, you're going to be able to use a vertex and plug in the point, but we all have most of these things here, all right? So just to let you guys know, all right? Um, and so I'm running out of time for this video. And uh, if, if you need for more videos to be done for these questions, just let me know. Let me know and um, leave a comment um, whether what you thought was helpful or if you have more questions. And if you're still around at the end of this video, it's a long video, um, and, you know, definitely give this video a possible like, give, give, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Uh, and turn on notifications so that know when uh, new videos come up. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, bye, and be safe.